Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Tse. And I'm Emily Su. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Beijing announces former security chief Zhao Yongkang is being investigated for corruption and huge scandal for Communist Party. CY Learn urges all government staff to oppose Occupy Central movement, dismissing concerns about polarizing society. McDonald's surrenders tons of food imported from disgraced mainland supplier. Beijing has announced that former national security chief Zhao Yongkang, one of the most powerful men in the history of modern China, is being investigated for corruption. He's the most senior leader of China's Communist Party to be accused of corruption, and his downfall has huge implications for public confidence in the country's legal system. It's taken the central government more than half a year to confirm that Zhao Yongkang is in trouble for suspected corruption. According to China Watchers, that's because Beijing was worried that disgracing the man who was in charge of the country's law and order for more than a decade would cause a huge embarrassment to the Communist Party and shake public confidence. The party's graft watchdog announced through state media today that the 71-year-old retired national security chief was being investigated for suspected serious disciplinary violation, officials speak for corruption. It was reported back in early December that Zhou had been placed under virtual house arrest. He's the most senior Chinese leader to be investigated for corruption since the Communist Party took over the country in 1949. Zhao was a member of the all-powerful Politburo Standing Committee that ruled China and was the country's security czar overseeing the police, domestic intelligence, paramilitary, judges and prosecutors until he retired in 2012. It's understood that he became too powerful and his fall from grace has also been linked to the downfall of former Chongqing party boss Bo Xi Lai. Zhou was said to have hesitated to act against Bo, a political star who was destined for the halls of power in Beijing until his wife was implicated in the murder of a British businessman. Zhou is the highest ranking casualty of President Xi Jinping's promise to stamp out corruption and punish tigers as well as flies who break the rules and abuse their power. Chief Executive Lan Chengying is urging all government officials to oppose the Occupy Central movement, dismissing concerns that he is taking sides in the political reform row and further polarizing a deeply divided society. Lung insisted there's no middle ground when it comes to abiding by, abiding by the law or breaking it, and all citizens should oppose any move to blockade the city's business hub. On Saturday, the chief executive declared that he would add his name to the Alliance for Peace and Democracy signature campaign against the Occupy Central movement. Speaking before his cabinet meeting this morning, Lun Chunying stressed that he would keep his word. I will head to one of the street booths to sign my name when the time is convenient, said Leung. But noting that there will be a media scrum when he signs up, the chief executive said arrangements will have to be made to minimize inconvenience to shops and pedestrians. Since Saturday, several principal government officials have signed their names to oppose the pro-democracy civil disobedience campaign. Occupy leaders have vowed to gather 10,000 people to blockade Central, to pressure Beijing into granting Hong Kong genuine universal suffrage for the 2017 chief executive election, if the public is not satisfied with the government's proposals. Lam brushed aside concerns that he's polarizing society further by blatantly taking sides and that it will be harder to forge a consensus now. Any law-abiding citizen will be against such large-scale law-breaking behavior, he said. That should be the attitude of all officials. He went on, there is no middle ground between abiding by and breaking the law. The consensus is to abide with the law. He added that the government will ensure there is sufficient time for all sides to express their views during the second round of consultation on constitutional reform, expected to kick off later this year. Core Alliance members met the press this afternoon to unveil plans to make the 17th of August, the last day of their anti-Occupy campaign, a Peace and Democracy Day. Convener Robert Chow expects at least 50,000 supporters to march from Victoria Park to Cheda Garden in Central, where they'll place paper flowers at a shrine for democracy. I can assure you our desire is to run a very peaceful, very orderly, rather speedy uh, rally. And we want to demonstrate to the rest of Hong Kong that this may be the model rally people should try to uh, 
follow. Stickers will be handed out to help the Alliance keep track of the number of participants. The Alliance was given a boost when anti-Occupy posters were plastered on more than 1,000 minibuses operating on 50 routes across Hong Kong. The drivers fear their business would suffer should democracy campaigners take over the streets of Central. In another development, Central and Western District Councillor Chen Choi he said he'll be recruiting lawyers to provide free legal advice to small and medium-sized businesses that may be affected by the Occupy protests. The leaders of Occupy Central say their first ever meeting with the government's point woman on political reform was disappointing and non-productive. They rejected Chief Secretary Carrie Lam's demand to ditch their plans to take over the streets of Central to press for real universal suffrage. The first face-to-face -face talks between the organizers of Occupy Central and the Chief Secretary didn't go well, according to Carrie Lam. I, I don't think uh, we could convince uh, the conveners of Occupy Central to drop their plan. Uh, as you all know, they have been planning this movement for quite some time. Lam says she tried to convince the Occupy leaders that a full-scale street blockade of Central to push for genuine universal suffrage would severely affect normal operations in the business district. And she warned that the protests won't sway Beijing. I think uh, it, would, it would not be possible to try to coerce the central authorities uh, into a particular position on this important subject of uh, selection of the chief executive by threatening uh, to do uh, some sort of action like Occupy Central. Occupy leaders Fanny Tai, Chen Kinman and Chu Yuming described the long-anticipated meeting with Lam as disappointing. I cannot say that the meeting is productive. It seems that the secretary, chief, the chief secretary still has no idea what she is going to do in the coming months. Tai said Lam asked them to scrap their campaign without providing any concrete solutions to resolve the political deadlock over the city's constitutional development. The University of Hong Kong law professor went on to criticize the anti-occupy signature campaign organized by the pro-Beijing Alliance for Peace and Democracy. Alliance leaders claim that 930,000 people have signed up so far, exceeding the 700,000 ballots cast in support of civil nomination in Occupy's unofficial referendum in May. The Thai said quality trumps quantity. The campaign itself has not given a clear uh, goal to the public, and also there's a lot of misleading statements. He said on the other hand, Occupy's plebiscite gave the government an indication whether it can win LegCo approval for its reform package. If any proposal from the government that cannot set aside international standards, it will be vetoed. This is the political reality that the government must face and cannot be just uh, dismissing it by referring to any other uh, uh, actions taken by any other social groups because votes cast it, views expressed it, Let's have councillors bang by that. Thai said government officials, including Chief Executive Lun Chunying, who support the alliance, were exercising poor political judgment. Lam herself stopped short of saying whether she would join the signature campaign, although some of her colleagues have already done so. McDonald's has handed over to the government tons of fast food products supplied by the mainland firm at the center of a rotten meat scandal. McDonald's has come under fire for initially trying to conceal that it bought items from U.S.-owned Husi food factories. Hundreds of boxes of food, including fries from Guangzhou Husi, were taken to an open-air car park in Tumun this afternoon. There were also packages of chicken nuggets and chicken fillet, while some corn spilled out from containers. McDonald's announced on Sunday that it would hand over all food products made by Husi factories on the mainland to Hong Kong government food and hygiene inspectors. A member of staff from the Center for Food Safety was on hand to monitor the transfer of packages. The department said about 22 tons of food, including 16 tons of chicken, 660 kilos of beef and 5.4 tons of vegetables were collected from McDonald's today. It's a far cry from the fast food chain's initial claim that it did not buy supplies from the disgraced mainland supplier. The scandal erupted after a mainland TV station exposed unhygienic practices at Shanghai Husi, where expired meat was reprocessed and repackaged before being supplied to fast food chains on the mainland, Hong Kong and Japan. 
Health Minister Ko Wing Man says Hong Kong will not back down in a dispute with mainland experts over resuming live chicken imports. That means the ban will continue as long as experts on this side of the border are satisfied with quarantine and control measures. In January, more than 20,000 chickens at the Changsha Wan wholesale market were slaughtered after the discovery of the deadly H7N9 virus in imports from across the border. The market was closed for three weeks and in February, the government imposed a four-month ban on mainland chicken imports to allow authorities to set up a segregation facility. A site in Taku Ling where local and mainland chickens will be kept separately is now ready to open its doors. The four-month live import ban expired in June, but the city has yet to receive chickens from the mainland. Health Secretary Cohen Man said this is because mainland experts insist that the H7N9 virus is less likely to cause a disease among poultry and suggested another set of quarantine or infection control measures. But that's not good enough for experts on the Hong Kong side, which means the stalemate will continue. I think um, over the point of um, quarantine and infection control measures, I do not see any possibility that the Hong Kong government or Hong Kong experts will agree to adopt uh, another set of standards uh, to protect the uh, Hong Kong people from the threat of external line. Regarding plans for a central slaughterhouse to reduce disease risks, Ko said a decision has yet to be made. But the government will appoint a consultant soon to gauge the public's views on whether the sale of live chickens should be banned. On this particular point, we, I'm afraid we have not uh, reached a decision because uh, we have earlier on said that uh, we would like to uh, have another look on the policy. And um, soon uh, the government will appoint a consultant uh, to help us in uh, soliciting the public's opinion as well as understanding the question uh, to help the government in coming up with a uh, decision as to, in the, as to whether in the long run we should, we should um, uh, have uh, live uh, poultry uh, supply at all uh, in the Hong Kong market. But banning live chicken sales permanently may be a difficult task as many locals prefer fresh instead of frozen meat. Yan Chai Hospital has come under fire for the death of an elderly patient last year, with his family accusing medical staff of negligence. Both the hospital in Chinwan and the hospital authority have been accused of shirking their responsibility as relatives demand an explanation. ATV's Alison Chan reports. Yun Hao Chi faced the media today to show pictures of the wounds he claims of his 84-year-old father in October last year. Yun Chung Kun died of sepsis, the severe inflammation of the entire body. His family alleges that this was due to negligence by doctors and nurses at Yan Chai Hospital. One of the most bizarre and ridiculous medical negligence and error I ever heard. Yun was admitted to the Chunwan Hospital in January last year after developing a urinary tract infection and a minor wound on his lower back following spinal surgery in Matilda International Hospital on the peak in 2012. The wound became worse and more wounds emerged while he was at Yan Chai, but he was discharged in March. When they inquired, family members were allegedly told by doctors there was no cure. Relatives took the man to a number of hospitals before he died in October at St. Teresa's Hospital in Kowloon from sepsis, triggered by serious ulcers and pneumonia. His family is convinced the original wound could have been healed with diligent medical care. A hospital authority investigation found that, instead of changing the patient's diapers every four hours, he was given only three for several days. If you look at the case as a whole, you would find that uh, the negligence is so serious, the neglect of duty is so gross that it would merit an investigation by the medical council. I think this is obviously um, um, a, a, a case of medical misconduct. Yun's daughter said any negligence should not be blamed on a labor shortage as her father's ward was not fully occupied. In his defense, Yan Chai said Yun's condition worsened because he refused medical treatment, but lawmaker Joseph Lee expressed doubts. It would be uh, unusual 
to hear that well. The patient, if the patient is corrupt, uh, unco uh, uncooperative, then uh, the um, healthcare professionals in the clinical area just let go and will not do anything. That would be a kind of unusual practice. Mm -hmm. The hospital authority and its public complaint committee, the PCC, have been accused of shirking responsibility, with Yun's son accusing them of repeatedly giving unsatisfactory explanations. The PCC of the hospital authority sent me a letter a week later and telling me, you can take the legal action against the Yantai Hospital. In the meantime, if you have any further evidence, you can submit to us. This is ridiculous. The hospital authority said it will investigate further. Alison Chan, ATV News. The MTR was hit by yet another service disruption today, this time on the Chunwan line, due to a signal failure during the morning rush hour. It's the sixth interruption since last Tuesday, and some lawmakers are urging the government to check the system for underlying problems. ATV's Winner Wong reports. Passengers commuting between two of the busiest MTR stations we're in for a frustrating time during rush hour this morning. The Chunwan line was hit by a signaling failure that lasted nearly two hours. Trains ran at five-minute intervals between the two stations and three-minute intervals along the rest of the line. Even when the technical glitch was fixed at 8.18 a.m., the backlog of passengers continued to cause problems. Commuters were advised to leave their homes earlier or take alternative transport. The MTRC has been hit by six disruptions since last Tuesday, five of them due to signal failure. Democratic Party lawmaker Wu Qiwai, a member of LegCo's transport panel, says it's high time the government stepped in. He has no faith in the MTRC's own investigations and wants the Electrical and Mechanical Services Department to find out whether there are underlying problems with the signaling system. The railway operator had a progress report today on the South Island Line extension, which is six months behind schedule because of construction problems expanding Admiralty Station. Senior construction engineer Jimmy Poon reported that the project is about 70 percent complete. The new line will have an unmanned driving system, which the Disneyland Resort line has been using since 2005. Poon says compared with what the majority of MTR lines are currently using, this newer system will be more reliable with better technology. The South Island Line East starts at Admiralty and runs through Ocean Park, Wang Chuk Hang and Leitung to South Horizons. Although the operator says it's still aiming for the original target of 2015 to start the new service, the line may not be ready until 2016. Winna Wang, ATV News. The only power plant in the Gaza Strip has been put out of action after Israeli tank fire hit its fuel depot. Large parts of the tiny territory are facing a blackout as the Palestinian death toll in an Israeli offensive surged to 1,115. Flames and black smoke filled the air as the fuel depot at the Gaza Strip's only power plant caught fire after being hit by Israeli tank shells. The attack blacked out large parts of the territory, where 1.8 million people are cramped in. Officials said there was no hope of saving the plant, as fire engines were not equipped to contain the blaze. Earlier, an Israeli airstrike triggered a fire in a building housing radio and TV stations in Gaza City. People fled from the burning structure in panic. The attack came as Muslims marked Eid, ending the Ramadan fasting month. But there were no fireworks in Gaza to celebrate the festival. Only flares dropped by Israel in the search for targets lit up the night sky. As the bombardment continued, despite a UN call for a ceasefire, more people lost their lives in the three-week-old conflict. About 1,100 Palestinians, many of them women and children, and 53 Israeli soldiers have been killed. Appeals from world leaders for an end to the bloodshed have been dismissed by Israel. We must be prepared for a protracted war, said Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He said the aim is to destroy all tunnels which Hamas is accused of using to attack Israel. In Washington, National Security Advisor Susan Rice supported Israel's right to defend itself. Her speech to Jewish elders from across the U.S. was interrupted by a protester. Truth is, Israel is killing innocent people in Gaza. Stop the bombing, stop the killing. Stop the bombing, stop the killing, and the siege of Gaza. After the demonstrator was led off, Rice praised President Barack Obama for increasing U.S. investment in Israel's missile defense system, 
which intercepts rockets from Gaza. Iron Dome has literally meant the difference between life and death. And I'm deeply proud that President Obama helped make it possible. Hamas, meanwhile, has again rejected accusations that it is to blame for the hundreds of civilian deaths because it fired rockets into Israel. The rockets were as a defense uh, uh, against the aggression. Those who started uh, the aggression is the Netanyahu and the Israeli uh, army. If Mr. Obama uh, is stupefied or perhaps is surprised uh, of uh, uh, such action, the question is as follows. Uh, do you expect anyone uh, not to respond uh, if he is attacked in his own homeland? So Gaza responded as well. So why Obama and the leaders of the free world why don't they surprise vis-a-vis the, vis -vis the occupation uh, of our land for several decades without having a window of hope? Would it be possible for us to live time and time again under occupation? Hamas says any lasting ceasefire must include the lifting.